anyway. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks so much for your support. I'm really grateful for all of you watching this video. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you go back and watch my other videos. Um, the descriptions summarize the content of each video so you can at least see what you're gonna watch. But I hope you watch them all. I have been blessed so deeply by this project and I hope you have been edified with me. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I post. Hit that like button and comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, you can make fun of me and my music or disagree with my messages all you want, but you should still listen. These messages will bless your life. I hope you just listen and learn and enjoy and feel inspired as you, as you choose, as you will. So please look past me and my flaws and listen to the spirit of the messages and the music and let these videos just generate within you new energy and potentially unfamiliar ideas for new ways you can be more anxiously engaged in fulfilling your purpose. Even those of you that don't share my spiritual convictions, please listen. There's a lot here for you too. Today I'm going to talk about angels. So I had a special experience the other day. A couple of good friends of mine, uh, Tyler Gould and Mike Freeman, started a groundbreaking podcast called The Richest Man in Town. And that's in reference to the movie It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, most of us know the story. The main character, George Bailey, is a very frustrated and depressed businessman who wishes that he'd never been born. And miraculously, he was provided a guardian angel. And he has the opportunity to, to see what life would be like if he got his wish. The movie takes a dark turn in George's absence. And he sees the positive role that he had been playing in the community and in the lives of others. And at the end of the film, George's brother toasts George in his life and calls him the richest man in town due to his bountiful gifts and the blessings of family relationships and the joy of serving others. This story is very deep. Um, I'm going to talk about this podcast a little bit, but I'll get back to the role of the angel shortly. So their podcast episodes are two hour conversations between the hosts and the guests most of the time. And they dissect the realities of love, faith, service, overcoming hardships, you know, victories, failures, anything real and meaningful that, that we experience as part of this life. The title, Richest Man in Town, is especially appropriate in the allegorical and parallel themes of the movie and the potential spiritual impact of their podcast. This podcast really is all about remembering what's really important in life and sharing how to achieve more success in relationships and living a life worthy of that description, the richest man in town. As anybody digs into commit to a path that would take them to that place, anyone can become more and more clear about the sometimes overlooked beauty of life, like George. But we will then have more opportunities beyond that. And I think the, the theme of this movie is interesting because George is blessed, but the angel, I think, represents what can be the next step. Because once we have that knowledge and gratitude and that clarity, we can become like that guardian angel as we share the blessings and the lessons from our journeys the things that we've experienced through our detours and we can better help others to overcome their despair and fear and to also enjoy the hope and clarity that we have found as others have helped us. I talk about this podcast, but I'm actually really grateful. I, I had the opportunity to be a guest on their podcast last week and I have to say it was a really special experience as the hosts, Tyler and Mike, asked me questions about my life 
my love, my faith, my challenges, this YouTube channel, this project, and you know many of my full-on failures in life, I was able to take a step back and remember why I'm here and how I got here. And I, I actually did gain more clarity as to what I need to continue to do and what I need to change to become more and more true to my eternal design to better help other people. The spiritual strength and the joy I've experienced in overcoming very real fear and doubt as I've created these videos is, is beyond my ability to describe. Choosing to follow the Spirit's promptings to share my personal witness and experiences and perspective and choosing to expose my heart and soul and convictions and shortcomings has strengthened my resolve and blessed my soul beyond any expectation I had. I have a desire, a deep desire that all of you listening can feel inspired to do the same. I fully believe that we can all find opportunities to help others in the role of the angel, as we take faithful steps into the unknown, living with faith, hope, and charity, I know we can open more and more previously under, undiscovered windows and doors in our lives. The light that's available for us to enjoy and share with others does require us to make choices about what we stand for and how we will better utilize those God-given resources. We should be ever progressing and refining we read in Alma 32.3, quote, Angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost, wherefore they speak the words of Christ. Wherefore, I said unto you, feast upon the words of Christ, for behold, the words of Christ will tell you all things what ye should do, close quote. Participating in spiritual innovation, discovering new ways to help Heavenly Father's children remember and clearly see the truth is exactly what angels do. We all know who these angels have been in our lives. How many have helped you see at times of blindness, like George Bailey? I'm so inspired by this additional witness of innovation that I have been able to experience with the Richest Man in Town podcast and with Tyler and Mike. Those that have watched my videos will know that I have named this channel unofficially, but I call it the art of righteousness. I fully believe in the power of artistic expression, which is basically the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. The key theme that I'm aiming at is to inspire as many people as possible to themselves create unique and innovative methods that identify more abundant harvests of righteousness. The Art of Righteousness YouTube channel and the Richest Man in Town podcast are two witnesses of spiritual innovation in partnership with the Lord to produce good fruit that he will multiply for his purposes. So now I'm going to tell you about a third witness, and it's amazing. Um, the timing of all this, but after watching my videos, a, a friend of mine, Eric Jepson, reached out to me to tell me he was about to give a lecture about how art plays a critical role in helping us comprehend the incomprehensible. His lecture further confirmed how our diverse and singular gifts, those given by God, must be magnified to escalate our participation in his work. His lecture was specifically about Joseph Smith's first vision and the ineffability of that experience. And so, yes, I, I just learned that word. Ineffable means something that's too great or extreme to be expressed or described in words. Eric shared artwork, poetry, and music from all over the world and from many generations of people, sharing their personal experiences with the Spirit and myriad perspectives of the first vision, how they imagined it, how it impacted their lives, how it might have been to be in that grove with the Father and the Son to witness that incredible visitation. 
Eric masterfully teaches that for ineffable experiences, a culmination of artistic expression, personal perspective, emotional and spiritual assertions and inspiration allow a triangulation to occur. And the way that he describes it's amazing because, you know, we think about triangulation and pinpointing something or the location of something. But many perspectives and a variety of witnesses of something that is impossible to understand in words like like the first vision become more understandable, more effable to help us hone in on the depth and the meaning of such an experience. This is not to replace or even to affirm or define those truths, but to work with the witness of the Holy Ghost to expand our comprehension. I have to say it's a, it's a life-changing lecture and another example of the art of righteousness. Eric played the role of the guardian angel for me, and he is definitely an, art, an artist of righteousness, and I just want to thank Eric. I put a link to the lecture in the description below. In addition to my experience with this channel, I've now shared two other very important witnesses, uh, personal witnesses that I've had experience with recently that followed God's will and the spirit to create something innovative and new and to create variations or different styles within the art of righteousness. And I hope this encourages all of you, um, all of us to, to come together and unite. Um, I think these, these witnesses encourage a culmination of the faith and testimony and boldness of anxiously engaged creators and partners with the Lord. Those who are innovating and discovering new ways to help others overcome and avoid the evils of the world and to find the eternal ineffable truths that can become more clear to better help our friends, family, and others we love or Heavenly Father's children generally, our neighbors, soften their hearts to hear the Spirit of the Lord. The purpose of these videos isn't to impress you. Hopefully that's obvious. These videos aren't produced or perfected. I hope only to teach those that are open to learning from a unique perspective and to show you that you're not alone in your imperfections and fear and vulnerability and that you can do more than you are today. The Holy Ghost will help everyone open their mind to new adventures and opportunities to unbury the talents that he has blessed us with. The song that I'm about to play is about my personal battle to overcome the temptation to hide my light and put my candle under a bushel. It's the musical chronicle of my escape from the bondage of fear and apathy and political correctness. Even at times since I've been a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, at times I have lived like an undercover disciple of Jesus Christ, disconnected from my spiritual and eternal identity and my full potential. I'm telling you, there's something to learn from watching someone put it all out there, to share his heart with you, to reach deep, to open your mind and heart to things that might not current, currently be obvious to you, but are true. The lyrics of the song and the links to the podcast and the lecture I talked about are in the description below. I really hope that you open those and, and experience those angelic artists of righteousness. The Lord has something to teach you. Just like he will teach me through the light, you will add and you will contribute to the colors of our experience together. This song is called Undercover.
Chase my heart for me. 